Dale, Ira Epstein with your Metals Market Wrap-Up, and this is for Tuesday, the 1st of October, 2019. We're just after 4.30 p.m., and as you can see, silver up 30 cents, gold bouncing $16 as the stock market got hit. And what took place today in the stock market was we saw a mixture of manufacturing and, co and construction spending down. Big problems there. The world slowdown's gradually eating into all this. You know, I, I, a lot of trade I was watching at the end of the day on financial TV, and they're wondering if this fourth quarter we're in now is going to be similar to last year's, where the market's ugly at the beginning and takes to the end to recover. I don't know that it's that similar. You know, if you made a deal with uh, China on trade early on, October 10th, that would change, I think, a lot of people's focus. The other thing that impacted the markets today was Japan. Japan is talking about changing their way of buying instruments. You, as you know, they've been buying every month uh, Japanese bonds, but now they're saying they might not just buy, be buying Japanese. They're going to look at foreign. Well, if you're looking at foreign, da-da, America's got, what, the best interest rate, relatively speaking, and certainly is a large economy. We absolutely have that going. So that started playing in the market, and I think it got the, I, I think the break in the stock market, being oversold in the gold and silver, caused a bit of a bounce, the dollar down, as most currencies were up on the day. Even the Brits are getting some play now. We're in the capitals, be it of Germany, of France. They are now talking amongst themselves of maybe there will be a time limit on that backstop for the Brits. Boy, Boris Johnson, you might get something there. As we look in gold, we can see that we've got a down thrust going. The market is off from the high close of 1526.60, and this is a weekly chart of just closes. The market is down in round figures, what, 40 some odd dollars. Okay, but it's still over the 18 week moving average, which means the longer term charts still have an upward bias. When we look at the chart pattern, there's a lot of talk in the circles that we've got a head and shoulder formation. A head, a shoulder, a shoulder, and we've broken out to the downside with one of the targets commonly being mentioned being that 100, uh, be it the 18 week moving average of close. I almost said 100 there. Okay. When I look at the momentum, I see a market that is not trending. I see a market that's got a higher high, lower low, and certainly one of these vertical price breaks. I mean, let's get serious. You got to a high of 1543.30, and you just got to 1465. That's a vertical price break. You didn't even have in here on a day a higher high day. That's when you catch a market one-sided and you do a swoop in the trading. If the market wants to fall, one of the support zones comes in at the 100-day moving average of closes. The 200 days way down at 1365. So that is a possibility. It sort of ties in with that 1450 level. So where's the resistance? The 18-day moving average of closes back at 1510. What about support? Well, there's two levels. I often look at key moving averages if they're under the market, and they are here, and I also look at Bollinger Bands. And if you take a look, the first time you hit the lower Bollinger Band was yesterday, and the market was down $33, $14.72. Today it's right back over it. Often the first time you hit a Bollinger Band is where pros move into the market, and if they've got a short position, the bias was down, maybe they were short, they do some covering. I'm going to look for the resistance at the 1509 level. What about momentum? It is oversold. So yes, I'm not seeing anything yet that you can hang your hat on if you're a bull that says, oh, this market's ready to go again. But I'm also seeing an oversold market that's hit a downside target, and in the past, that first challenge of the Bollinger Band has acted as a support level. When we come to GLD, the ETF, again, I had one of these ugly chart patterns where you had an outside day up. I'm not going to review it again today. And then you broke through it, got to the lower Bollinger Band yesterday. And just like we did in the futures, we bounced away from it. I see resistance at 141.40 and support at that 138.75 level. 
when we come to GDX, I wish it had gone down a little bit more. It would have been classic where you hit that lower Bollinger Band in the 100-day average. It didn't. Uh, you've got the pattern of a higher high, a lower low, so there's not a trend. You are oversold in the zone of support with resistance coming back at 27.86. On all three of these charts, I don't see anything that's bullish. The question is if they overdone themselves to the downside. In the gold-silver ratio, we, we after this correction, we, remember we got down under 82, got up just yesterday to uh, 86.65, that's a big correction in the market. In percentage points, about 5, 6% normal, and now you're getting a little pullback. But I need in order to see the metals pick up. I need to have this number under the 18-day uh, average of closes, not over it. So let's go to the silver market. Again, this is how the market looked on Friday. Still hadn't hit the lower Bollinger Band. It got there yesterday, and the one thing I know is when you first hit it, be it on the upside or downside, it looks the most bullish there, the most bearish here. You think the world's falling apart. Been there, know it. What I thought would happen is the first challenge might create where the pros step in and do some short covering. Lo and behold, it's the zone. Again, like the gold market, I, I, there's nothing to hang your head on to be bullish. All the market's done is had a hard break. It's gone from 1881 to 1694, almost a $2 break. Has it worn itself out against that Bollinger Band is the question to the downside. And if so, can it get back up towards that 18-day average to regroup? In the copper, I don't see anything bullish on this market. Yes. I'm going to stick with what I know. The first challenge of the Bollinger Band is often a short covering area. And you take a look. The number coming in 256.70, it got to 255.70 as the market was dropping. And by the close, you're 256.05. So the big money was left on the table on this break, and the market came right back. I know it's hard for people to learn these techniques, but I teach it in my charting course, and you can learn from them. Are they always right? Nothing's always right. If it was always right, nobody would be around, okay? We'd all be, I don't know where, but we'd be the richest people in the world. Um, and by the way, even they get wrong, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Look at this market, you've got resistance up there, you've hit a support zone, maybe you're a little overdone. Now, the platinum didn't come back from hitting the first Bollinger Band try. It is oversold. I wouldn't be surprised if the market tries to get there before the end of this week. Give a pop-up. You've now got two days in a row under that number. You're getting to an extreme, so be a bit cautious. The bigger support's 867. Resistance now, the $9 level. Yes, the resistance becomes the Bollinger Band in this case. And in the palladium market, I mentioned yesterday that, you know, are we going to see a shift in some of these where this market starts weakening as others come up? Go back and look at that tape. And I was getting concerned that we could not be on the way to losing the embedded reading, and it appears we're doing that. I don't think the fundamentals have changed in the market. I think that the market's very concerned about shortages in this particular metal. But as a technician, this was a warning sign, a sign, okay, Nice run up, maybe it's time to take a look at other things. In the dollar index, we had how many days in a row up and over the Bollinger Band? One, two, three, four. I, I'm sure I would have said yesterday, the odds of the market closing over the Bollinger Band today are 1%, 99% against it. Why? Because of my rule of thumb. Doesn't mean it can't go beyond it. All it means is 5% of the time you close over or under the Bollinger Band. And when you consider that, I, I went back and I did research and I said, what about consecutive closes? I've seen them go out to seven, eight, nine, but more times than not, way more times, it seems that five is the stretch on it. So I, t I subtract from the 5% theory that the market will trade within the band's 95%, percent for each consecutive day over it. And the word is consecutive. Get one day where it closes back under it, you start the count again. Because there's that element of pushing the Bollinger Band. And all that happened today is you got over it, you closed back under it. It's not a change of trend. It's a sign that the market's back into uh, 
balance with itself. Maybe that's the right word. The trend is still up. You'd have to take out uh, way back here, 97.80 to break this pattern, but maybe a correction setting in. What I do each morning for my subscribers is I discuss with them first thing in the morning. I'm talking six in the morning. I'm recording a video to start your trading day out. And I'm going to cover with you 45 charts typically. I'm going to do 40 futures and three to five ETFs at a time. The idea there is first thing, I have already read what's going on in Asia. I'll know what's going on in Europe, have already have that in my hand, and the US. Today was a surprise day. You know why? Everything I'm looking at in the bonds and notes, they, they weren't looking bullish at all. Then the news came out of Japan after I did my video as to them changing program ideas as to maybe they're going to buy foreign instruments to get a better yield and try to get their inflation targets back up and not worry so much about the negative interest rate, let it take care of itself. So each morning I'm going to give you a touch of fundamentals, technical analysis galore, and then we're going to talk where to enter, where to exit, objectives, and where this whole idea is wrong. You will get that each and every morning. And my goal is to have it to you before 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time. I've had a case of the flu. I'm still there doing it. And this was not a comfortable day today, yesterday, or the day before. But I'm feeling better this afternoon, finally. But look, let's assume you want the metals. I am not expecting that every day you've got to go through the stock indices, the currencies. There's a slide bar on the bottom. As you pull it, stock indices will flash up there. Then currencies. You'll know right where you're at. That too difficult? On the side, you're going to see the names of each of these. Click what you want, you get right there. Yes, you're welcome to watch everything, but the videos are typically 15 to 20 minutes long each day. And the idea is to teach, to throw ideas, to uh, be like you're sitting next to me and walking you through what I'm seeing. I don't walk on water. I'm going to be wrong. But at least I'm going to have a discipline and I'll tell you, hey, before you even enter this thing, here's where you're wrong, here's the objective, here's where it goes. What's the cost? Well, a tick in gold is $10. Silver is $50 a cent, right? So it's about $10, you know, $5 a tick if you look at it, there's 10 ticks there. $7.95 for the first 30 days. There's no contract. You're not stuck in anything. After that, if you want to continue, it's one of two ways. $15 every 30 days. And it's 30 days. It's not on a monthly basis. Or you can decide to go for a one-year subscription. That's $13 every 30 days paid up front for $156. I think you'll find that if I can throw one idea at you, help you with one thing, maybe that's well worth it. Go to our website, www.irapstein.com, under the word research, morning subscriber video. It's all explained there, and that's where you sign yourself up. You can click right here if you're watching me on YouTube. It'll take you right to that page. I'm Ira. You have a good day.